That's why we can't have a competition. It's Bert. If I was just competing with you and Ari, yeah. I'd be like, you know, we'll just have some fun. Yeah. But with Bert, I'm like, I want you to die. <laughs> you talk so much shit. I'm like, I'm going to take you to the depths of hell. 100%. <laughs> Guys, the rumors are true. Bert is undergoing a double kidney transplant, and we are sending him our best in lieu of flowers. Please check out his new episode of Something's Burning on the Burt Kreischer YouTube page. Thanks for sitting in, Joe. My pleasure. Um, I hope he does well. I hope he recovers. He'll be fine. Yeah. He does they can have, do that now. They're good at it. They are good at it. Yeah. yeah, they fix everything. They found, I think they found a young uh, Brazilian girl and they took her stuff and now- Brazilian. Yeah. And now they're going to give it to Bert. So same blood type. That's all that matters. Good luck, Bert. Um, you, you, got, you got here, you checked out the new studio. It's awesome. Thank you. Very cool. And then uh, one of the staff, as you were pulling up, said, I can't lose in arm wrestling. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And he goes, I want to arm wrestle him. And I was like, yeah, you should. And I go, you're going to lose. And he goes, I can't lose. And I go, <laughs> I go, you want to bet? I'll bet you. And he goes, how much? I go, whatever you want. And he goes, how much? I go, how about a grand? And he was like, all right, I'll take that action. <laughs> and Why then, was he so confident? It's part of his whole persona. And he is, is like, he's, he really goes, he has looked at me before and goes, if somebody challenges me to something, I cannot lose. I, am, I, I cannot lose. And I said, okay. That's a crazy delusional form of confidence. <laughs> he is so delusional. That wasn't even a little difficult. <laughs> Wait, say that again. It wasn't even a little difficult. <laughs> I let him try for a while. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to be humbled. So I gave badly. him a few seconds. Yeah. I was like, come on. He wants to arm wrestle Bruce, too. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> Bruce is a bear. I know. A literal bear. Yeah. You can try him next if he's if he's down. <laughs> oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Just thanks, try, though. man. Oh, I'm good. Thanks. Isn't it nice? Isn't it a good way, though? Don't you think it's good to have, like, for you to come in here and kind of, kind of begin the day? It's not the beginning of the day, but have a win at the beginning of part of the day. Yeah, feel good that you won a thousand bucks. Yeah. But I mean that you won, that somebody goes, I challenge you to something, like to have a win. Like the, those wins kind of That wind is like, yeah, but you know. It was too easy. I was going to win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't arm wrestled anybody in like a fucking decade. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, you're pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not though. But you just knew. Yeah. <laughs> like, what are the odds? I don't know what the odds are, but no, I, I had full confidence. I had full confidence. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was so necessary. <laughs> now we can always cite this when he goes, it is impossible for me to lose. Some people have crazy confidence. Yeah. It's very strange. That gets them killed. It's funny. Because we talk about it sometimes how our good buddy who usually sits where you sit is a crazy confident guy too. Yeah, I always wonder how much of what Bert does is his performance. Act. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah. It's hard to tell. It is. You know? I do remember sitting on your set one time and he was like, I'm going to run the LA Marathon. And we were all like, shut up. No, right. you're not. You, he had no training. Where, which was, and everybody who runs marathons was like, you don't understand how to prepare for a marathon. You don't just go. You take your time, like it's weeks and you work up in mileage. Then you kind of work down and then you do like a half, you do like 10 or 12 miles like the week before. Then you like, they have the whole strategy. And he was like, I'm just going to do it. And we were like, you're dumb. And then he went and he did it. Well, he does. I mean, he regularly back then at least was running like a couple of miles every now and then. Yeah. You know, he's just, Bert's unusual. Like you could you could count him out and it would be a mistake. I, I agree. Yeah. He's like, like when you and him played tennis, like Oof. that makes sense to me. Like yeah. that's, that's who he is. He's a weird guy. But that was all like, that was also, he has this very bizarre skill set for like, so you do archery regularly. Yeah. So you, 
and then there's people who regularly do it and you guys have a certain um you know comfort with like the whole like the equipment and how yeah. to, but if you were to grab if you were to grab all your friends who don't shoot regularly like they don't practice regularly and you go try to do this i'm a hundred percent certain that of that group he would do the best hmm. of, of people that don't practice or if you were just like this is how you shoot it because his he has really impressive i'm telling you hand-eye coordination mm. like he has really good like anything like shooting a throwing a dart throwing a ball hitting a baseball all that stuff is what he actually excels in i've seen him play pool he can play pool he, i didn't know that yeah not bad yeah he and, and he doesn't and by the way he doesn't shoot pool regularly yeah no you can tell yeah yeah he's a if he wasn't such a drunk he'd probably be an amazing athlete <laughs> <laughs> right don't you think yeah Yes, which is why this kind of brings me to we we skipped it last year. I don't know if we skipped it the year before, but we've been talking about doing sober October yeah. again. And I like the idea that you mentioned. I think we should talk about it briefly, which is obviously we we do sober for the month, right? Which is to Bert's benefit. And then we have it can go crazy if we go challenge style, right? You particularly go into your dark places in your head if we, if we make I don't want to do that yeah, anymore. competition <laughs> well we, uh, did, we did that that one year I yeah, went, I were, went so crazy you were pissing brown yeah. uh, so let's not do that but it was how about like something that is a challenge but a task that like there is no kind of winner there's just do you do it or not right and and what you suggested was maybe we wear their straps again and everybody has to do a 500 calorie a day workout yeah every day every seven day. days a week and here's my it, question if you do let's say you you go in the morning and you get some lift in and it burns uh let's just say 200 calories do you then have to just do 300 more or yeah do you, okay so it's just 500, yeah, 500 in, a in a day okay yeah. okay i feel like that's fair i think it's fair not too crazy because i know you like to do two workouts a day so if you did like your lifting and then you did your right. cardio you it can would, get it in you can get it in the thing it's the consistency is like seven days a week it's like when we did the hot yoga challenge we had to do 15 in the month which pretty reasonable reasonable but towards the end i think i owed like nine and so i had to do like nine days in a row yeah and after a while you just get in this crazy groove yeah or like you're you just you almost kind of like the fact that it's torture. Like yeah. you accept the fact that you got to do it. I was thinking last night about this 500 calorie a day thing. And I thought, I almost predict how it goes, which is the first week you have the enthusiasm and the momentum that you're excited, right? Yep. The second week, the enthusiasm starts to fade. And the third and fourth week are really the grind of it. Where yes. you go like, I got to fucking shit. It's day 23. I got to do this. Today. And on the last day, you're going to miss it. Yeah. You're gonna be like ah, yeah, because you're gonna be ripped. You're, you're gonna be in crazy you're gonna shape, be, and you're gonna feel and and you feel that sense of accomplishment. Yep. Um, yeah, I think it's a really good. And for me, I have the benefit of I finish October and then I shoot my special, so it's uh, really good for me. Oh, you'd be shredded. Yeah. I was kind of fat in my special because I just got back from Italy. Oh yeah, I got up to like two eleven in Italy. Really? Yeah, I'm like one ninety seven, one ninety eight now. I got up to two eleven. How did, and did you drop quick? Yeah, you just ate. Well. I just eat clean and work out a lot. Uh, how how clean did you not eat in Italy? I ate like a pig. Yeah, right. It's pasta. Yeah. I drank, got drunk every night. It's the best. <laughs> that is the best. It was fun. I don't think Ten there's a days. better indulgence than pasta. Ah, oh, it's the best. It's the best. Just and you know, it's I don't eat it most of the time. And I was in Italy, so it's just in like, Italy, just fresh. And some fucking grease balls making it in the back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I went straight from that right to my special. Now, did you pick where you're gonna? Really? I haven't Wait, decided yet. You haven't no. decided yet. No. Have you talked about what you did? No. So it's a secret. I filmed in two places. I'll say it on this show. Okay. I filmed at the Chicago Theater, and then I filmed at Stand Up Live. So, so I you went at from two places. like one of the most beautiful, large, it's a large, it's a 3,600 seat theater to a comedy club. Yeah. So you're debating. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what I like more. The problem with the comedy club is there was too many people talking to me. They, they like wanted to, they were too close. They wanted to be like a part of the show. Like we had to shut up three different shows. And I told them before the show, I'm like, please, I'm filming. Don't talk. They don't care. People still talk. Because like, yeah. yeah. it's people in the front row. They're like, you're right there. The you're front right row. There. The front row. I walked out of my stage in Connecticut on Sunday in the front row. This guy started like yelling out yeah. quotes. And I go, it's great to know where the dumbest person in the audience is. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for sitting up front. And he went like this. 
Yeah. Connecticut is always dumb. You always shit on Connecticut. It's the dumbest place in the country. <laughs> it's not a real state. It's <laughs> a highway between Boston and New York, and it's filled with people that have no hope. Oh. <laughs> Holy shit. They have no hope. They're I've never heard somebody trapped. go harder on Connecticut. Well, I grew up in Massachusetts. Yeah. So I worked in Connecticut all the time. And every yeah. time I'd leave there, I'd be like, what the fuck? I'll tell you this, though. I did Mohegan Sun Arena, and it was a fucking blast. Yeah? Fantastic. Probably most, mostly people from New York. A lot of mass people. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, the Connecticut people are probably like, what's everybody laughing at? <laughs> 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 one of my best friends tommy jr he still lives there i've been friends the with this player? guy yeah he's yeah. been fr i've been friends with him for 30 years he he's still from, lives there he's from there yeah he's fr i shit on him every time i call him up it's so fun to shit on a place i mean like i hate erie pennsylvania so much erie pennsylvania such a fucking dump a bunch of losers it's a depressed town <sighs> with a depressed economy and it, if you live there you know get you're out. a fucking zero just yeah get <laughs> yeah <laughs> Just get out. Get out. But get if you're the, fucking born a place like that, you're doomed. It's yeah. Like, what the fuck do you do? It's isn't that unique with it where there's cities that just have a complete style of it, like Louisiana, like New Orleans. Oh yeah. Complete style of its own. Absolutely. Um You might as well be in another country. Uh, they're doing in Miami. Yep. Is a complete style of its own. And I also feel like San Francisco, when you get when you get into the real city of San Francisco. Yeah, where all the human shit is. Yeah, that's uh, it's a totally where different experience. Where all the experience. bum shit is. <laughs> yeah, a lot of bum <laughs> they shit. They fucking ruined that. That's there's the a city lot that of white people shit. ruined. <laughs> a lot of bum shit and a lot of Asian shit, too. Yeah, a yeah. lot of that, too. Yeah. But the fucking, that city is lost. That is a lost city. It's just been, it's fucking, it's fallen apart. It's progressive policies taken to the furthest degree possible, and you see the ramifications. Yeah. That's what it is. It's like, fucking fascinating, actually. It's wild. If you, you let them go. That's what they make. Do you remember when we were there, and there was in a fucking hotel, we thought there was a hotel fire? Yes, with Diaz. Yeah. Remember that was he came down the elevator? That was before it was a a homeless pool of diarrhea it yeah. was still like a city that had like that was like a, it was an exciting place to be yeah it was, it was like two o'clock three o'clock in the morning the alarm goes off and we all shuffle out of our rooms and we had to go down the stairs and everybody was like slowly yeah. going down the stairs and i am freaking the fuck out because i'm i'm planning it out i'm like if, if there's real fire I'm running over everyone. Yeah. I'm like, I am not going to, these fucking slow pokes that are making their way down these stairs. Yeah. I start was taking heads freaking off. Freaking out. I yeah. was just like, I'm just going to start running on top of people. I am not going to do this. I remember the genuine panic that, um, I didn't feel a panic when I, oh, the alarm. I was like, okay. It's when I got in the stairwell mm -hmm. and saw how, first of all, they were narrow and full of people. Single file, single file, old, like 1800s building. Yeah. So real, like, like people were tinier back then. Yeah. So you're in this little ass staircase and, and people were just taking their sweet time going down the stairs. I'm yeah. like, this is a fucking fire. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta go. You gotta go. I or people know. are going to die in <laughs> yeah. fire. Yeah. It's crazy. It's not good. I know. I would, I would have, um, I think I would have thrown an old person like out of the way and down this and stepped on them if, yeah, if I yeah. had felt the heat a little more. And then we found out that it was just somebody had pulled the pin on an extinguisher. Mm -hmm. And so the smoke that you don't really process at the time, like what kind of, what type of smoke, it wasn't smoke from fire. It was like that smoke that comes out of an extinguisher. Yeah. Yeah. And we got all the way down the end. We're trying to figure out where Diaz was and Diaz popped out of the elevator. They told us very clearly, don't take the elevator. Don't take the elevator. Yeah. Joey took the elevator. Yeah. What do you think of my fucking mama? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Took the elevator like a doctor. Yeah. You're like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, Shut the fuck up, Tom Segura. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> San Francisco. They ruined that city. He's, that city's he's, never coming back. He's, he's <laughs> <laughs> he shared a cigarette with me outside of Cobb's. And he's like, he's like, let me see that cigarette. I was like, oh, okay. And I gave it to him. Then he passed it back. And then I gave it to him again. And then I go like this. He goes, what are you, a fag? Go buy a pack of cigarettes. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> Go buy a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, I was like, all right. Oh, that's hilarious. Okay. Thanks, He's a, that's a fucking original human being. Yeah, yeah. I want to get him to move here. I know. You think you can? 
It's going to be tricky. He's like the king of New Jersey. I went places with him. Everywhere yeah. he goes, like, it's Joey. Yeah. Joey's here. Remember the video I sent you of him walking out on stage at my show in yeah, Jersey? Yeah, that's amazing. That was at the Performing Arts Center in Newark. And there was, he hadn't been on stage in, I think, 18 months, he said. Yeah. And he just walked out. They went nuts. They went nuts. I should share that video. It was really, really cool. And then he came back. He goes, I'm having a fucking panic attack. <laughs> he sat, because he was like so worked <laughs> up. He sat down and was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> the best time to prepare for growth is before the opportunity arrives, especially for online businesses. ShipStation sets you up for growth by directly integrating with every shopping cart and storefront so your products are easier to find, easier to manage, and easier to get into the hands of happy customers. Don't wait until you're drowning in orders to find the right shipping solution. Upgrade to ShipStation today. My favorite thing about it is that you can actually, in, you can see an interface where you see what orders are coming in, what's gone out, and which carrier has taken it out. So you know which orders are pending, and it's all very clear in that interface. So whether you're starting small or scaling up, ShipStation makes ship happen. You can join over 130,000 companies who have grown their e-commerce businesses, ship more and grow more with ShipStation. Go to ShipStation.com cave today and sign up for a free 60-day trial. Start today and get set up before the biggest shipping season of the year. That's two months free. Visit ShipStation.com cave. Today's episode is brought to you by True Classic. Guys, let's talk about t-shirts. Finding the perfect fitting shirt can be terrible. I swear the thing is either way too tight, has a case of bacon neck, or is just plain big and boxy. I have been through this so many times. I have bought so many shirts, and these guys have hooked it up. I actually wish I was wearing a True Classic shirt right now instead of this stupid white shirt. Luckily, True Classic wants to make every man look good and feel good. Tighter fit in the chest and sleeves to make your arms pop, room in the torso to keep things cozy. Plus, all of their styles are super soft and pocket friendly. So guys, no excuses. Get rid of those ratty t-shirts I know you've been hanging out to for years and get ready to upgrade. We have an exclusive deal for our listeners. We want to hook you up with some true classic. For a limited time, only get 25% off with the code BEARS at trueclassic.com. I really love the way these things fit. And for any of the big boys out there, they have long body options for the tall guys and up to 3XL on their staple colors. Skinny dudes, big dudes, buff dudes, all dudes. True Classic has you covered. Get comfortable, get going, and upgrade your wardrobe with True Classic. Get 25% off at trueclassic.com with the code BEARS. Free shipping included on purchases over $100. 100% risk-free guarantee with a 30-day return policy. True classic. When you look good, you feel good. Oh, you got him back in. Yeah. Yeah, he's in now. He's I in. did uh, that arena in um, Atlantic City with him. How was it? It was great. We did two nights. The first night, you could tell like he hadn't been done a show remotely like that. He had done yeah. like 100 seaters. He'd done like, you know, some little comedy clubs. And so he was like a little, you know, just kind of getting his feet back in the game but the next night he fucking destroyed saturday night he destroyed it was wild that's awesome yeah it was wild to see he's a fun guy to watch do that stuff he's the best when he's on i've never seen anybody funnier yeah i've seen a lot of funny people i've seen better writers i've seen you know great joke crafters yeah and, and craftsmen but nobody's funnier than Joey. Ag agreed. Also, like at a dinner table, yeah. there's just like he's the king. Yeah, it's just like just we get the check. We yeah. gotta go. It's just it's <laughs> yeah. He puts on a show, you know. And when he loves you, you know, like he's around people he loves, he can yeah. be free. And yeah, loose. then he really loose. Yeah. yeah, it's fantastic. By the way, I want to ask because I haven't seen it, but you had uh, Zuckerberg on, yeah, uh, from Facebook. Yeah, did you guys talk about banning? Like, did that come up? Like there. Yeah, we talked about, uh, well, we talked about censorship. It actually became an issue because um, he actually said on the podcast that the CIA, or the FBI rather, had contacted him and uh, or contacted Facebook to tell them about the Hunter Biden laptop story, that it was Russian disinformation. So the FBI actually had to make a, make a statement about something that was said on my podcast. So the FBI, which they never talk about anything, yeah. they, they never make statements. They released a statement. What did they say? Saying that what Mark Zuckerberg said was incorrect, essentially. Really? Yeah. Because, oh, because the FBI, <clears throat> if, I, if I'm understanding this correctly, the Hunter Biden laptop story was, let's say, trending and being talked about. FBI contacts Facebook and says, 
this is mis- this is misinformation. So don't let this put it in your algorithm to not let this explode. Yeah, I don't know if they gave specific instruction, but essentially what was happening was the New York Post had put up the uh, New York Post had put up this article. And Twitter had censored it completely. Like you couldn't share it, you couldn't post it, you couldn't send it in a DM. By the way, they do that, by the way. There was something that I tried to send somebody in a DM and I couldn't send it in a DM. They had made that article unavailable to share, even in direct messages. That was a different article, but it was it was something like that. And so um Twitter had completely censored it. It turned out it was absolutely a legitimate story. And uh Facebook said he had some version of what he said. It sounded like he was, you know, he was kind of candy coating it. He was basically saying they censored it, but they didn't censor it. You know, like, well, we had, we took a different approach. We limited its dispersal uh, yeah. or limited its distribution, which I don't know how they do it. There's like he, he what, when he said it, he, he like said it without revealing too much of what their whole system is or how they shadow ban things and how they it's really like, interesting how all, it it feels like i understand yeah. one thing is that these are private companies right like meaning like these are this is not uh the library right <clears throat> so companies can do but it feels like like the social media platforms are kind of inconsistent with when they flag like fucking um chris de stefano i just saw uh posted on his instagram like his last three posts got flagged and taken down from Instagram. For what? And they're just like podcast promotional things. It's so strange. Yeah. So maybe somebody has a hard on for him. The problem is so much of it is subjective. Isn't that look pull pull, it, pull his up. <clears throat> um yeah, it's yeah, see like And Post that was just like removed. Bobby Lee and and uh Santino. You know, but it, it was like also the the previous ones. We're also uh, we're also flagged too. It's just very strange. You know? But it's like I think if someone just decides that you're a problem and yeah. they put you in like a cat, and the thing is like, how much leeway do employees have? Because it's clearly not that being done by AI. This stuff is very subjective. So a lot of these kids that are working in these tech companies, they're coming straight from universities and they're super woke, and they think that people like De Stefano or people like you or me are a real problem. Yeah. You know, people who joke around about stuff. This is a real problem. Yeah. And joking around about serious things that <laughs> yeah. can't be joked about. Oh my God. The thing that, um, you know, uh, you, you probably lose track of this all the time because it happens to you like every day. But when I did your podcast last and we talked about homeless people. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it said, <laughs> you go, you go, I think we should shoot them. And I go, I like your ideas. Yeah. And then news outlets, yeah. Did they took the, it was end quote. It was like, he says this, Rogan says this, Tom says, I like your idea. These guys are endorsing violence against home. And then they go, and then it happened. A homeless person was killed. And this is what these guys are, this is what these guys are. Under fire about. for joke intended as political jab. Yeah. I was under fire. I wasn't even aware I was under fire. That's what's hilarious. Yeah. I didn't even have any idea. I didn't pay attention. Didn't and affect I, me at all. I, I got messages of like, I cannot believe that I, I supported you and that you advocate violence against the homeless. You got messages? Yeah. And I didn't even- Repulsive. I didn't even tell most of those people- Look at this repulsive podcast comments. That you remember- But that's when, some, But we should just explain what we actually said. Right. What, I actually, what we're actually saying is that if you shot them, no one would care because they don't do anything about violence. Right. That's what we're saying. We weren't saying you should shoot the homeless people. We were saying, like, you can't touch their stuff. Right. Like, they're allowed that, to leave. In L.A., they're, that's considered actual personal property. Yeah, and they'll arrest you. Arrest you for touching their I stuff. I go, but they won't do anything if you shoot them. If you, exactly. I go, maybe we should shoot them. And there's there's a huge spike in actual violent crime. Yeah, um, And to be clear, I I was part of the group that paid to have the homeless people that were on Cesar Chavez in here in Austin drown in Lake Travis. So oh, you that's why you have that. clean streets. I spent a lot of money doing that. We had oh. to, we tricked them. We got them onto a boat. We said they were going to paradise and we just dumped <laughs> them off the back and they drown in Lake Travis. So that was me. <clears throat> oh, that costs a lot of money. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. 
I almost had to do two shows to pay for that. But imagine <laughs> someone saying, <laughs> imagine someone saying that they thought that we were serious. I mean, they'll say about this. Yeah, of oh, course, hundred yeah, percent. It's yeah. just like out of context. But all they do is get more people to listen. Like they don't understand that they work for you. When they do stuff like that, that's just still, free advertising. By the way, still. They still don't understand. They do it to you so much, and all that happens to you is your audience grows and grows and grows, and they're still like, new article. <clears throat> we got them. And then the fucking new numbers come out, and it's like, there's 20 million listeners. It's like, how, how are you not figuring this out yet? Mm, they're not paying attention. And, and then also, it's like almost like they, they're in a trap. Because the way they get clicks is to talk about someone that's controversial and or popular. Yeah. Right? So that they do that and they just make you more controversial and more popular. Yeah. It's all it does. It doesn't work at all. It never works. No. It's like poison that po you but shoot it, but here's someone the thing. and it poisons Isn't somebody, yourself. some editor, publisher at one of these publications <clears throat> savvy enough to get yep. that? No, they wouldn't be there. They'd be independent. They're all fucking idiots. How many good independent journalists are left? There's a few, but they're all writing for like Substack now. You yeah. Know? I mean, there's people that are really good. That, that you're are paying the to read their stuff. Yeah. Yeah. There's people that are really good at the Times. There's people really good at the, not the LA Times. The LA Times is empty. There's, there's people that are really good at like the New York Post and the Washington Post and, you know, the New York Times. They're, the Wall Street Journal still has like good journalists. Yeah. But they're just infected by this mind virus, this woke mind virus that's like spreading through the country where people just can't look at things realistically. It's very yeah. weird. I just watched, I was watching, my cousin made this series called The Big Con on Apple Plus, and there's a Wall Street journalist who investigates uh, a guy who was, I think, in like Eastern Kentucky that had the biggest social security scam in the history. And the way that they discover the story it's so fascinating. He's going through just like writing, uh, this journalist is writing just boring, you know, Wall Street Journal um, budgetary things, right? And he's going through Social Security and, it, and then he's going through how often things are approved by judges. So the way it works is somebody applies for like Social Security, uh, like medical disability or something. And then the, they have a judge in each county that hears a case and the percentage of times that they approve would usually vary between 40 and 60%. And then there was a judge in this county who's approving 99%. And he was like, that's weird. And so he goes and he finds that this lawyer and that judge were in cahoots of like, and they had a, a $500 million uh, scam. It's fucking Whoa. fascinating. Yeah, it's fascinating. Whoa. I'm but, not shocked. But, but that's a, a journalist who actually saw a number and was mm. like, oh. Yeah, there's real journalists out there. Yeah. But it's like the people that are writing about us, the people that are writing about podcasts, they're just trying to get clicks. That's yeah. all it is. It's like a little hustle. And if you say something, they could just take it out of context and decide that it was a repulsive call to violence against homeless people. Instead, just a joke commentary about the fact that although they'll arrest you if you move someone's dresser from under a freeway underpass, yeah. they won't arrest you if you shoot somebody, which totally. is really crazy. Yeah. And then you, I mean, dude, the... The violent crimes, they're capturing on video now. I see so many video. I saw this crazy mugging in London. Um, in LA, it's, it's uh, the spike in violent crimes is through the roof. Did you see the, the car one in New York this week? Which one? Where a car did like tactical, like precision tactical when you ram the side of a car, like the way that police are trained to do it. Mm -hmm. He did it twice. Then came out. To, then someone jumps out of the passenger side of, of the car that rammed, grabs somebody, like hits them, grabs a bag, gets in and speeds away. And it's all on video from the sidewalk. It is insane. And this Whoa. is in broad daylight, I believe in Queens. Have you seen this video? It's no. all over the internet. Wow. Um, for sure, I think I saw it on, I saw it posted everywhere, but it, on, on Rappaport's page on Instagram, he posted it. A bunch of people posted it. It's well, a, when you let people think or know that there's no consequences for crime, they just go ham. It's um, it, it it is really scary. It is that one right there. It's that one right there. Yeah, uh, this is not a movie set, right? So that black car rams that car, right, and perfectly. And then this car hits another car, speeds away, and the black car comes back again 
And that Whoa. is like precision. That's like trained on how to do that, right? Then this guy jumps out of the passenger seat. Shitty camera work. Yeah, they're probably scared to death. Panickers. Yeah, look, he's got a gun, okay? Smack somebody or, or the window on that side. Grabs, eventually, the bag. He's got a bag now. Gets in there, and it's like, see you later. That's wow. broad daylight. Wow. It's insane. Pretty impressive. It is impressive. Impressive that they didn't fuck the car up either. I, I, I can't believe that part. Yeah. Cars yeah. are made well now. But he he uh, he knew how to do that too. That's not yeah. like. No, that's like a real criminal. Yeah, that's a skill. Or a person who used to be a cop. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's when it gets really weird, when cops become criminals, when they just give up and they realize like, fuck this. Yeah. I, I ran into a lot of, um, oh. $20,000 heist in Upper East Side. Man, he did more than $20,000 worth of damage to his car. Fucking no shit. You know? What did he steal? Thieves uh, rammed a car <clears> into an <throat> SUV and stole $20,000 from its disoriented driver during a brazen Upper East Side robbery Saturday. In a dramatic scene of something out of the Fast and Furious, the black Mercedes slammed onto a silver Toyota RAV4. The Mercedes initially slammed onto the RAV4. Second Avenue, 55 year old man driving the Rad Four. I've been driving northbound. Um, okay, scroll down. And did he? Did he? Is he coming from the bank or something? Have some of this. What is it? Oh, all right. The Mercedes. Oh fuck! One person is heard saying, "An armed man in a gray sweatshirt banging on the window." He's got a gun. He's got a gun. Yeah, but what did they take? Oh, they. That that's the car. The, huh? That's the car that they just. They must have abandoned. The specifics made off of 20000 in cash. So they must have known that oh, those people... Oh, someone was coming out of a bank or something like that. You know, that was a big problem in Denver when they first started legalizing weed. Because in, in uh, Denver, when they legalized weed, they didn't legalize bank transactions via credit card. So they weren't allowing people to pay in anything other than cash. So these people had to take oh. large sums of cash and then transport it. So people were getting tailed the all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So then they started hiring like mercenaries to travel around. So g guys would like have ARs <coughs> and fucking Uzis and shit, and they would be driving with these people with the cash, and they would follow them in cars and flank them and protect them. Yeah. Wild, because they'd have a million dollars in cash, because they were doing insane amounts of profit. Lines around the block. Do you remember those early days when weed yes. first became legal in Colorado? Yeah, yeah. It was pretty wild. It was. And so they put people in crazy danger because they were saying, you can't use credit cards. Well, why? Yeah, that was just like a city thing? it's illegal. Pot's yeah. illegal. It's bad for you. <laughs> uh, okay. Here's the question. It's bad for you. Do you want to arm wrestle now? <coughs> I'll be even better now. Uh-oh. Oh, he doesn't want to rematch. No, you don't. Why do you want to do that to yourself? Go for a walkabout. I cheated. Mm. Yeah, I get something to Ashen. Oh, oh, you got? Okay. That's all right. All right my goodness, mind. I cheated. We're good. We're good. We're good. Zola, we're good. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> that is so fun. Uh, I pulled up these um, Instagram accounts that I'm totally geeked out on all the time now. Just to... Sure. What do you got? So this one, every goddamn Oh, I follow that dude. This dude's yeah, great. Yeah, he's great. He's out of Massachusetts. Is he? Yeah. Um, you know what's great about him is that when you have a kettlebell and you learn, you ba I, I learned basically, you know, you get used to five or six movements. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, these are the movements. Right. And every time I go to his page, he's doing something I've never seen or considered. And it makes it way more fun and exciting and just like yeah you know a cool thing to learn he's really a badass with these things he's know? incredible and he's all kettlebells and what's really interesting is occasionally he'll do dumbbell stuff mm -hmm. and you realize like he has crazy strength and it's all just from these kettlebells yeah like he doesn't do much dumbbell stuff but when he does it he's ridiculously strong really which is very interesting so he could probably beat any two in an arm wrestling match yeah yeah I think it'd probably be both of us for sure. Look at the size of him. Yeah. He's fucking jacked. Yeah. But it's also like the movements he does are very interesting. Like he does like a, like a lot of like twisting movements, like, you know, yes. like single split squat twists and yeah, like this kind of stuff. Yeah. 
where he, he, he those those like sideways. He did this one where he was holding the handle and he twisted and went down to one knee mm -hmm. and turned back. I started doing yeah. that, but I'd never, that's my point is like, I'd never done that or thought of that. Yeah. And then I saw him do it. I was like, oh, I'll do that. That's one of the dope things about Instagram is that you, you can save videos into a folder. So mm -hmm. I have a folder just for training and I have a bunch of his videos in there. Fantastic. And it's all like different, different training modalities. I got to start doing videos. that. I've never done that. Yeah. It's really cool. Cause I, I've won for jujitsu. I have one for funny things, like things that I find that are funny. Yeah. Yeah. So I save them. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, because you can make a little folder. You know, and the folder exists in your photos or in no, Instagram? No, it's in your Instagram. Oh. And you can save them. Never if, done you, that. if you have videos and you want to save them, all you do is you use a repost app. So you re use the repost app and yeah. then it just saves it to your phone. That's and you don't right. have to repost it. Right. Yeah, you just save it. Yeah, so I've, I've sent videos like that when I see something horrific. Um, I'll ri I'll rip it and then I'll send it to Nadav to ruin his day. I take it off. I get it before people can pull it down because there was one the other day where a crocodile had a, a person in its mouth. Yeah, had a dead person. You want it? Yeah. <laughs> Hold on a second. And uh, I was like, oh, they're gonna pull this one. I gotta I gotta get this one. Man. Yeah. Here I'll airdrop it to you. Okay. Hold on. Is it going through? Um, Here, try Oh, it. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hold okay. on. Hold on. Uh, let's see. <gasps> yeah, that one's rough. That one's rough. If you want to save, send it to your producers. But the thing is, like... Oh, my God, dude. The thing is, like, I think... <laughs> I, it's definitely real, and I think it's uh, it, it's in South Africa. It sounds like. Did you, li listen to his accent. It sounds like Australia or South Africa. Which one do you want it to go to? So they have it listed as alligator in this little video clip, but it's definitely a crocodile. And the guy has an accent. That, is it going through? I don't know. I hate you so much. It's not working. And I, I just texted it to him. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody i think eddie bravo actually sent me this that one yeah he sent me that one that is insane and the moment i saw it i was like oh i gotta save this one they're gonna pull that one quick yeah it's fucked it's like it's pretty pretty obviously a human yeah like you see the face and everything yeah 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 no it's pretty bad um all right what's the other oh do you follow any good food accounts? This is the opposite of training. Oh, yeah. Gouda follow, foods? Do you follow Gouda yeah, foods? Yeah, I follow that guy. He's the guy that cooks steak and butter. Anything. Yeah. He's like, he's like, pull it up. There it is. See if you can get some volume on it. You're doing this can while I'm talking it? about Guga foods? Can you hear it? We're going to have a talk after this. Go back to that guy, that video, please. I want to see if we could hear his accent. I'm trying to figure out what his accent was. Because I heard it on my phone. It wasn't that clear. Yeah. But I don't think you should show this. No, you definitely it, can't show this. I think also that might be a young person in his mouth. You think so? Yeah. Here, let me. It's hard to say because it's, it's, all, it's all fucked up. It's like... Uh, that's the reality of living in those places. These, you know, in Florida, just in the last like few months, there's been six alligator attacks. Really? Yeah, there I was, remember it happening when we were when we lived there, but not that frequently. There was a TV. No, no, they're overpopulated, man. There's fucking yeah, alligators everywhere. True. All right, let me hear. Oh Jesus! Yeah, that's hardcore, dude. And the pants. The pants are still there. Yeah. The pants are still there. Yeah. Yeah, this is harder to watch now. Yeah. It's different when you get it on your phone. Yeah. The it's, arms are gone. One arm's yeah. inside his neck. The other one's gone. Jesus, dude. Yeah. It's like he's showing us, man. It's a, oh, the legs are there. Yeah, it's uh, a child. Oh, oh, is that a doll? No. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah, it's just the corpse. Really? It's, yeah, it's not a doll. It looks too creepy. Like if you go to the, like when the, you see the face, it, there's th there's like Oof. yeah, it's so creepy that it just it's giving you, it gives you like a visceral reaction. Yeah, yeah, that part I don't like seeing the face now. It's really bothering me, dude. That is the reality of living 
anywhere near crocodiles. You can close it. <sighs> There's a guy named Jim Shockey. I had him on my podcast. He's a, a professional hunter from Canada. Yeah. Like one of the fucking manliest men that's ever lived. Like a manly man. And they hired him to go shoot crocodiles in Africa because there had been so many k people killed by crocodiles. And he went? He went to kill crocodiles in Africa. And while he was there, one of the local village women was pulled into the water by a croc and killed. It was so common. He said everybody in the camp was like missing an arm, had a chunk taken out of their leg, like everybody. How much, uh, how many did he kill he definitely killed one. It That's was a, it? It was one that was a big one that was uh, targeting the people. Um, I don't know if he killed other ones. Jesus. But I know they hired him to, to definitely get rid of this one big crocodile that was a real problem because it was feasting on people. Have you ever been, because uh, I know you hunt, Do, have you guys ever been felt threatened by what you're hunting? You, you're always in danger. If you're in the woods and there's mountain lions, you're always in danger. But you've never had like a direct encounter? I saw one last year for the first time and it was uh, from inside of a truck and it was about 30 yards away and it was fucking huge, man. I'd seen two mountain lions ever before and both of them were fairly small. I saw one of them in Colorado. It looked like it was about like 50, 60 pounds and one of them that was in Montecito mm -hmm. that also was like 50, 60 pounds, like just maybe 70 pounds, not that big. Big like freaks you out, but not like this motherfucker. The one I saw was like 180. He was jacked, like like thick fucking forearms, man. Yeah. Like these giant ass forearms and this big pumpkin head. And we were in a truck. And my friend Colton goes, dude, stop. There's a fucking cat right there. And we look over and it's like just starting to get dark out. Not quite dark out it's yet. And I see its glowing eyes from the fucking headlights of the truck. I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. And even from inside a truck, I was terrified. I believe and I it. got binoculars on it. So I'm like inside the truck, 30 yards away, pretty close. And I'm looking at it through binoculars. And I'm like right at it. And I'm like, what's you? It's like a demon. It's like a demon. It's a giant elk killing demon. Nothing brings, like, if you're not there experiencing that in person, nothing brings that to life like that nature is metal account. Oh, yeah. That, that yeah. thing is, I mean, everybody follows that. That's incredible. That, but you see shit on there <sighs> that you never see. Cause, and it's, what I love, here's what my favorite thing about that page is that it's, here's the reality of nature. You yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, everybody's perception of nature is all the things that are, pleasant to see right that's your that's what people go that's what nature is yes you know yeah we, we get confused and we think about animals like the animals that we love like right. pets dogs and cats yeah, those, and, we love yeah. animals who doesn't love animals yeah like those people are on a safari yeah and they see a lion take down a hippo <laughs> fucking crazy yeah you know they're just like oh and there's on. a shit ton of those videos out there. Uh, so many. <laughs> so many. The worst are the wild dogs that eat like gazelles alive. And they're just gutting them while the things are screaming. This has um, one, did you see, where I think it's, I forget if it's coyotes or hyenas or something, pull a rabbit out of a hole, three of them together. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. And you can hear saw, it, yeah. and then it just disappears. <sighs> it just gets pulled in three pieces. It's, it's insane. Dude, when I was in Alberta, one of the guys that I was there with saw two bears fight over the cubs because the male bear was trying to eat the cubs. Oof. That's what they do. They, yeah. they attack and eat the cubs. They kill them all the time. And so the female fights off the male. The male gets a hold of one of the cubs and kills it. The female chases the male off, and then she eats her cub. And he was like, whoa. Wow. He's like, I never saw that before. That's. <sighs> yes. He's just not there for that that often, but that's just what goes down. I feel like Once, I'm having the emotional experience of like when you see a real drama, like a really good dramatic movie and you're like, oh my God. How crazy is that? All those people have AIDS and died. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, uh, that's how sad I feel right now. <laughs> you know how horrible that is? That, it's I mean, horrible. It's so that horrible. That kind of life is the craziest life that exists on earth where you just eat your kid the moment it's dead. Oh my God, dude. And they, they're, they will fight to keep their kids alive. That's what's crazy. 
Like the moment the, the their baby's dead, they just say, "Okay, guess I'm just gonna I guess eat I it." I gotta eat now. I know that lions, especially males from a, like you know that join a pride, if they become like the top lion king in that pride, just mm-hmm. killed all the fucking offspring. Oh yeah, so that it's theirs from the beginning. Yep, you know? they kill all the offspring, particularly kill all the males. They kill the young males. Jesus. It's like, but the young males kill the old males too. That's even more horrific sometimes. Oh, it's, it's slow. Going after the slow one. Yeah, it's they, fucking the pride up. Well, they the, they get to the point where an old lion can't control the pride anymore, and the way they lose the pride is they get fucking mauled. They don't give it up. They get mauled. So, and it's often like two, three on one. <sighs> the other cats will jump on them. Because he was like the asshole that like ran this whole thing. It's like when Whitey Bulger got transferred to general population. Right. And they beat him with a padlock and a sock for being a fucking rat piece of shit. <laughs> and he was like 80-something years old. Yeah. I used to do Taekwondo with a guy that was one of his hitmen. Seriously? Oh, yeah. Back in like Boston? Oh, yeah, back in Boston. He asked me. I was, I was his instructor. And he asked me, like, if you're going to kill somebody, where would you hit him? And I go, like, I guess, like, the neck. He goes, yeah, the neck, I think. (laughs) Now, I knew that he was involved in some sort of organized crime at the time. I didn't know, like, to what extent. But then uh, afterwards, he got arrested for murder. Wow. Yeah, he he went to jail for being a part of all that crazy South Boston organized crime shit. His main fucking um, right-hand guy, Hitman. Who's in the do- he does all the documentaries about it. Uh huh. He's free because of his testimony. This has always wild me, but I think he's got 19 bodies. Isn't that crazy when there's someone who's done that and they're like, yeah, but they, they gave us good information so they get to live in society. Wild. Like uh, when, when Sammy the Bull. Like, you wild. Know, it's, it's wild, right? Yeah. Like, weird, that guy gets weird deals free. like that are like, wild. Yeah, but he gave, us, he gave us good information. Yeah. <sighs> That's a weird world. But that South Boston mob world, that's the reason why Dana White moved to Las Vegas. Really? He to, yeah, he had to get out of Boston. He's talked about it a bunch of times. Like, they were threatening his gym. They were threatening him. Like, you know, they wanted him to give them money. And he's like, I'm getting the fuck out of here. That's a good move. Yeah. And that was, that was all the Whitey Bulger crew. And then when you find out that he was an FBI informant, you're like, what? I know. And like, they let him get away with murder? Like, What? It's, it's an like amazing story. You knew story. he was murdering people? Amazing. Holy shit, for how long? Yeah. And then he gets caught because his girlfriend and him get in a fight in Santa Monica. Mm-hmm. She's like yelling at him. <laughs> and everybody's like, hey, you okay? What's going on? And then it winds up, you know, well, holy shit, that's Whitey Bulger. Yeah, the, uh, there was a neighbor who, who I think she was actually Icelandic. That's a crazy thing to remember if that's true. But I think she was Icelandic, and she's the original FBI tip call. Oh wow! It was a so f- she recognized him. Yeah, she had she had befriended I think the woman. Oh, and, and um, made the call, and yeah, and he and they were doing things like like they had all, just a hole in the wall in the apartment with cash in it, <sighs> like that was their bank, you know. And do you know how he got an identity? This is fascinating. How he would he was living in Santa Monica. And he would go to the park and he slow played a homeless guy in the park. Like didn't tell him who he really was, but told him one over his confidence would bring food, you know, something to drink, be a, a sympathetic and empathetic ear about this guy's story. And like over time, over time, eventually he's like, and I, you know, this is basically, I need an identity. I need a. So how about I'll give you this money and then I get your, your your state ID, your social security number, all this stuff, but I'll pay you for that. And the guy did the deal. So that's the identity he adopted. Oh. And that's how he was able to like kind of live and move about. So if someone does that, what happens to the original person? I don't know. I think he was kind of resigned. I think the at least the theory was that he's resigned to a life that is out of the system. So how about I take over your life that's in the system? Because you're out of it. What? And here is... Here's, here's money to compensate you, and I've befriended you. This isn't like one conversation. Right. I, we're working on this for months. So there's a long con. It's a long con. There's a lot of that. That's the thing that 
people have to realize like there's people out there that are really good at like weaseling their way into your life and stealing enormous sums of money. All of a sudden you're in business with them. <laughs> yeah. We just, so I just found out, um, I can't give away the name. I don't even actually remember exactly it, but one of the guys that works on tour with me, um, he, uh, his friend, he's been touring forever. And so he just found out that the bookkeeper for uh, a, like a bunch of bands has been uh, just got arrested by the by the feds stole three million dollars <gasps> was the bookkeeper and the way that it was discovered was one of the band's managers who she again is the bookkeeper for like a, a few a number of big bands knew that there was a card that he he's like this is a card that's for me and if i do xyz on the tour you know and and she keeps a, like different cards for different purchases anyways he never used it and like over over a course of like 22 months had never had a transaction so she knew it was an inactive card. like it was a card that worked and was in, in but not being used by this guy right one day he just out of the blue goes to use it and then he decides to log in and just see what if, he, if he's been using it and sees just pages of massive purchases, pages for months and months and months and months and months. Whoa. So she's using it and then using like band funds to pay for it. Whoa. Had this whole scheme going. And uh, they said like, with they they tracked her for a while. So it's, it's like a, a, once you do a cert over a certain amount, it's considered a major crime. Yeah. So even in white collar stuff, it's pretty wild. And she's taken, I, mean, I always, I always think of that Dane story, you know, like how his brother yeah. took his money. What is it that's so exciting about like stealing money that way for people? It must be such a thrill when you're getting away with it. Absolutely. And all those stories, the, both these stories have like similar thing. Cause I've, I learned about this woman and I remember Dane saying this about his, his half brother, uh, that they had a site like two lives going so in front of you like in front of the person with money it would be like jeans and a t-shirt and like just <laughs> ah you know i hope i can fuck i don't know man i need I, I broke my glasses i hope i can get a pair at the pharmacy today you know and then but like but away from you they're staying at like five star hotel so it's that yeah. The thrill also, I think, is like in making you think this. Yeah, they're spies. Yeah, they're spies. They're yeah. undercover spies. Yeah. Like, like, think about the lady who recognized Whitey Bulger and befriends the girlfriend and, and then makes FBI tips. Like, all yeah. of a sudden, she's in a movie. Yeah. Her boring-ass bullshit life is now, instead of that, the apartment complex she has is harboring fugitives. It's so much more exciting. Dun, 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 yeah. dun. Every day's a thrill. It's I mean, got to be. It's got to be thrilling. It has to be. It has to be. And to be stealing all this money from people and you're working with them like, hi, how are you, Mike? Looking great. Everything's Every amazing. Day. Meanwhile, you're just stealing money. Stealing. And you're at home alone just with piles of money on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Going on like these vacations. Yeah, you know? buying jewelry and shit. Yeah. Buying purses and shoes and... And none of crazy. it's yours. None of it's yours. You're just stealing. Give me, give yeah. me, give me. And you just have no plan. Like you're thinking, how am I going to get out of this? I how am I going to get I out remember of this? that. Have you ever watched that show, American Crime Story? What Where is they, that? No, American Greed. Sorry, it's called American Greed. It's like one of those, you know, it's like, like there's like a blueprint for like the same voiceover guy. And it, it just profiles these stories of white collar crimes, basically. <laughs> and... And they had one about a guy who got a job in accounting for one of, I think it was one of America's oldest cookie or cake makers, like a, a family company that did well, not like Hershey's, but like did well and had this book of business that like, you know, was somewhat popular. He got a basic accounting job in this, let's say 100, 200 person business. And the show profiles how eventually he was, he would, he was a, uh, you know, using the the funds of the company that had an outdated accounting system. Like just, they didn't have modern accounting. It was like handwrite this. Oh no. And he was able to take advantage of that. And he would write like two checks, but only write 
one of them in the book. So there was never like anything being flagged. Anyway, over the course of a few years, it was like six, seven million. And he was doing that thing where he had pictures of him and his wife on jets. And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like living it up. And, so going, like, and then he'd show up to work and be like, ah, oh, shucks, my Camry's not, I got to get new tires. You know, and they have no idea, no idea. And he just gets away with it. Was by he doing, posting pictures on social media? No, but they eventually found photos when they, <laughs> they said that when he tried, when he, when he knew the cops were coming after him, they were watching him and he like ran and he parked on the side of a bridge and he ran down to a creek and he just put Rolexes in the creek and put rocks on them. <laughs> like, to, like, he's a fucking idiot, you know? <laughs> and they're like, there's all these Rolexes in the creek. Yes, that's hide, him. That's him. Hide me, that's precious. The guy. That's the guy. Episode one, or sorry, season, is that a one or 11? 11, episode six, season 11. The thing is when people become obsessed with stuff, they become obsessed with like jewelry and houses yeah. and watches and, yeah. and, and planes and shit like that. Like that kind of insatiable desire for constant new and improving things. Yeah. That is not, that's not sustainable. It's not sustainable. People go nutty. And if you go nutty and you're stealing money yeah. and you're in that trap, you're in that constant yeah. needing the fucking new Bentley, needing the new thing. Did you get the 2023? That's a, yeah. It's the good one. Yeah, you, yeah. you don't want the 2022 anymore. Yeah, 2023, you got to turn yours in. 2022 is bullshit. I just talked to somebody about this too, about how he's an athlete, pro athlete, and how when you start, you have the means to buy something and you're like, I got to get this thing. Yeah. And it's the first time that you can actually buy, like, let's say a high ticket item. Right. But you find that even though it's cool and you might like it, it's not full. Dreaming about it was more of a thrill than purchasing it most a lot of the time it's fulfilling yeah or excuse me it's exciting i don't feel it's fulfilling it doesn't go like now i'm complete it's you know? just one of those things that it's so hard to imagine that you could get that it. you could get it yeah yeah that's part of the that's a big part of the excitement like i'm somebody that can get yeah. this yeah yeah you get you, you get excited because of the fact that you could do it but at the end of the day like i remember this i was sitting in this apartment that i had in north hollywood when i first moved to california and it was like way nicer than any apartment I'd ever had. It was, I had a loft. This is when I was on television. So I had a loft apartment and I had a, a pool table in my living room. I'm like, this is the greatest way to the live ever. Ever, yeah. And then I realized like after just a few months, I was sitting in, I go, oh, I go, it's just, this is just home. I go, you get used to whatever. Like you're used to everything. Like, so this felt like my apartment back right. in New York, which was a shithole. Like right. it wasn't that you different. Adapt. Yeah, I adapted. And I was like, this is interesting. This is not does not make me any happier to be in this nice apartment versus right. that other. And I, I realized like, oh, it's just like your home is just where it doesn't matter. It's just, you. it's just, it's a trick. Yeah. It's just these unattainable homes. They seem like so preposterous. And yeah, I'm sure it's great if you've got a nice view or if you have a yeah. big yard or something like that. It's great. But it's still just a home. It is. And the amount you pay more for yeah. like a crazy home. Yeah. You know, and then people like dedicating everything to have the nicest home in the neighborhood so they could show off to all the other people in the neighborhood. They want to have the bigger That's one. That's a big thing the for a lot of people. And also just the sheer size of some, like, it's almost like everybody goes, this is in my bandwidth or spectrum. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I, I go like, okay, enough. And then when you see that some people are into building a 25, 35, 40, 50,000. You're like, what are you doing? A 50,000? How about a Vander home? Holyfield's house? Yeah. I, the one that Rick Ross lives in now. It's, it's the craziest house ever. But what are you doing? It's with a that? fucking castle. What are you doing with he that? He had a room with like, it's like, he's got 50 bedrooms or something crazy. I know. How many bedrooms are in that fucking place? Look at the size of that fucking place, dude. Exa that view. I think it's on like some crazy amount of acreage, too. Look, I'm not hating you. I'm just 100 saying. Eight, 100 room. What the fuck do you do with that? Just get 100 room. That's there's, there's, amazing. I mean, there's parts of, of a house that's, that are normal size. You go, you know, we don't really use that room. You're like unused. I feel like so much of this house doesn't get traffic. But that's come from the mind who is the boxing heavyweight champion of the world. You know what I mean? Right. It's like Good the point. kind of guy that thinks he's going to conquer everybody with his hands. 
Sure. Th- that's the kind of guy that wants to live in a fucking castle. I'm a Vander Holyfield bitch. I'm the real deal. Build me a fucking castle. He probably wanted people throwing roses at his feet when he walked. <laughs> yes. You know? I mean, yeah. why not? Yeah. Those guys go crazy. When when like a guy is a conqueror uh, and he gets unlimited Jordan's sums Chicago of money. Home. You ever seen that one? I have. I think it's been on the market for years. Oh, I I did see a, a YouTube video about how they can't sell it. Yes, they. It's been on it's haters. Been, bunch of haters. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty wild. I mean, look at that. It's a, it's a pretty wild. Um, the top left one though, or it, that one? Yeah, is yeah, it that just one. not in a good area? I don't know. Look at that. I mean, why that's can't a it lot. sell? Who the fuck wouldn't want to live in Michael Jordan's house? I don't know. That'd be the dopest house to own ever. It pretty would, much would be. Are you be. kidding me? Like, yeah. Dude, this used to be Michael Jordan's place. You're yeah. Like, what? Yeah. You couldn't tell when you saw 23 on the gates, bro? That's, that's <laughs> got to be worth a lot more. Look at that, 23 in the gates. <laughs> yeah. That's got to be worth a lot more I thought more that was just your address, house. man. If you were a fucking giant Michael Jordan fan and oh you lived my in that God. area, yeah. why wouldn't you buy that house? It's got to be. I think it must it's be crazy overpriced. Pot. 29 million is a lot. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money for a house. Yeah, it's hard to sell a $29 million house. It is. The point is, it's like, real if you can't really afford to Michael that, Jordan's needs and desires, yeah. you know, it's real specific. I'm sure. I'm sure there's a basketball court in there, right? Oh, 100% there is. There's it has a, yes. to be full basketball court in there. There's probably a couple probably a little basketball golf course. course in the yeah. back. A little course. Cigar lounge. Yeah, it's probably sick as fuck. Look at that place. This Look is at wild. that. Look at that. He's got a fucking beautiful basketball court. Yeah, it's got that. Oh, that glass there is very 90s, you know? On the, I think on the, the most extravagant luxury you can have at a house is a home gym. It's the best. Home gym, yeah. Having a home gym is the fucking best thing ever. Yours is great. It's great. Anything like that, like if you get like, I, I have the Sorenex equipment. That's the same shit Bert has. Um, And uh, it's like just the fact that I don't have to go anywhere. Like, yeah, just, that's the best part. Just walk. Open the door. I put that. Um, that's what I love. I put that torque, that tank oh, in my shit. torque fitness tank in my yeah. backyard. Dude, I'm just pushing and pulling that thing across the backyard in the, in the heat, mm-hmm. and it feels like if, I just keep. A, I keep thinking about farm work. Duh. Like when you hear about somebody yeah. driving on a farm, yeah, so I'm just pushing and pulling that thing, man. Well, some of the great wrestlers of uh, our day came from farmland. Yeah. You know, there's like think about Iowa, like some of the greatest wrestlers Definitely. of all time come from that farmland. Every Illinois. year in um in college football there there will always be some a few freshmen in different teams throughout the country that they'll be like, "Yo, this this fucking kid is built like a brick shit. He'll bench like 550." Yeah. And then the story's always he grew up on this farm yep. in Nebraska or Kansas and he's just a fucking house. Just a house. Yeah. Yeah, with with unnatural strength for an eighteen year old, strong enough to beat any at arm wrestling. This is, this is yeah. When you grow up doing manual labor, yeah, like that's uh, Francis Ngannou, the UFC heavyweight champion. That guy is a fucking just doesn't seem real. Yeah, he's a, a super athlete, and he when he was a child, <laughs> he had to work in the sand mines. Doesn't so, look like a real person. I know. It's crazy. He's such a fucking freak athlete. He's yeah. 270 natural. <sighs> and talking, hits talking, harder than hits harder than anybody. Bert he, level and uh, athleticism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he hits hard as fuck. He holds the record for the hardest punch ever on this machine. There's this machine that you can punch or kick and it gives you yeah. like a reading. Yeah. You know, there's uh I think there's a video of him doing it. Jesus Christ. But yeah, he holds the record Show for the him. hardest punch that they've ever recorded Type in on that. Punching. I forget what the machine's called. We have one at the studio. Yeah. No, it's not that one. Not that one. The real it's one. like a, a thing that like it's mounted to a wall. New record. Look at that one. New record. Yeah. The top above. This guy is a monster. The amazing results today. Francis demonstrated a punching power just over. What what is that? What, what is he saying? One hundred twenty nine world record punch. But if you if you watch the way he KOs people, it's a hundred percent believable. Really? Yeah, he might be the hardest hitter on earth. If he was boxing, if go he back. just if he had just gone straight into boxing. No, go back to video selections. Top one there. That. 
If, yeah. you, uh, if you think about guys like Deontay Wilder, who's arguably the greatest heavyweight knockout artist ever. Huge power puncher. Huge. Deontay Wilder, at one point in time, I think his record was roughly somewhere around 39 and 0 with, I think he had 38 knockouts. Something along those lines. And he had one decision where he beat uh, Bermain. I forget his, I forget the dude's name. But anyway, he beat him by decision in the first fight, and then he KO'd him in the second fight. And the KO in the second fight is crazy. He's got his hands down, standing in front of him, and he just walks towards him and cracks him. It's nuts. Like, he gets this guy hurt and just goes wild. It's one of the wildest KOs you've ever seen. And you see how hard he hits. So hard, He yeah. hits so fucking hard. But he's a guy that won a bronze medal in the Olympics, like, a year and a half in training. Like, no bullshit. Really? Yeah, like they, he had very little training, and all of a sudden he's in the Olympics and he medals. Like his power is just like from God. This is it's in, like he have a, he's a from God power. Deontay or, or Deontay? Gonna, yeah, yeah. Deontay. So if a guy like that exists, then a guy like Francis, like if a guy like Francis just went right into boxing, it would have no been, MMA ever. Yeah. Doesn't have to learn how to kick. Just just has to no learn grappling, yeah. head movement, ha learn how to put punches on people. 270, natural, it's giant, insane power. His overhand right generated 129,100 or 0.161 yeah. units. And the off balance uppercut was 122.000 units. And his speed power of 51.064, which is equivalent to 92.84 horsepower which is the same amount of a small family car huge amount of a knockout power enough to lift 240 pound heavyweight off his feet yeah that's fuck yeah that unit that 129,161 units that's like a normal person like a good kicker that's really? like what a good kick is like yeah yeah like it's similar the the one 22? Yeah, 129. His, his, that's so his scroll. overhand right like is that, like a His kick. overhand right is like a right high kick. It's that. Think about how big your fucking leg is and yeah. how, how much power you can generate with your legs. That's what his punch is. His punch is the same level as like a really good kicker's kick. He could knock any out. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the guy doesn't lose when you challenge him. though. <laughs> <laughs> What if, what if Ngannou walked in here and he was like, you can't knock my ass out? Like, that was the challenge. Yeah, you couldn't. Yeah. You would hurt yourself. Yeah. You would hurt yourself on his body. Yeah. No. Oh, did you see him in the new Jackass? Did you watch the new Jackass? No, game? I didn't. So I still funny. haven't watched it. It's so funny. I heard so it's funny. amazing, but I get anxiety when I watch yeah. guys hurt themselves. Oh, yeah. There's that. You'll have it throughout. Yeah. But there's so many funny moments. But Ngannou um, punches. Who did he punch? That guy. So funny. I'm fucking forgetting his name. He punches him in the nuts. Oh! While he's wearing a cup? No. Yeah, it's fucking... No. This, what's this dude? Danger Aaron. Danger Aaron? Yeah. He's so funny. No. He's so likable. Aaron, don't do that. And yeah, at oh, one point... Oh, no. Oh, yeah, this is from the trailer. But man, Nganu punches him in the nuts while wearing a, while wearing a cup. And Whatever. It's, there he is. What? Like, that's not even a good cup. It's a, yeah. Oh man! It's no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, what the fuck, man? Francis <laughs> told his uh, life story uh, of his origin story, like moving, yeah, like out of uh, Cameroon and m m getting to uh, Morocco, uh -huh. and it took eighteen months. Eighteen months. Eighteen months, and he basically just hitched rides, walked figured out how to get to Morocco and seven times tried to cross into uh, Europe and seven times got arrested. And every time they would arrest oh, wait, him, rewind that. Sorry. Every time they would arrest him, they would take him to the middle of the desert and drop him off. And you have to make your way back to Morocco. It's the craziest story. And I hate when there's not enough ice in my iced coffee. <laughs> uh, well, who doesn't? I, I, I bet he hates that too. I like a proper amount of ice. Um, that's right, it. That's right, show a this wild. To me. Yeah, Let me show cringe. this. All right, here's the sound. Go. No, that's no. oh, oh, probably from the middle. Oh, Jesus Christ. He waited until the fourth theatrical release to become oh. a real. Oh, my God. Show it again. 
Oh, first, like, first he has to watch. Wait, rewind a little more. I like that before he does this, he has to press play. He has to watch him like, hit a heavy bag. Like, like, like you don't that was before that. that. So they're like standing around. Punch ever recorded. Like, yeah, there. Because you know what's going to happen to you, but you see him do that. <laughs> so you're like, fuck. What well, amount of power he generates? Just you know that little hook. Is? Dude, the amount of power that Francis can generate is it's insane. Yeah. And again, he was a child working in a sand mine. So he's like 10, 11 years old, digging sand all day. You want to talk about something that would strengthen your body. It just... All day. So all day, his body is exerting all this force. All day. And it's recovering and healing and getting stronger and thicker. I mean, and then he learns martial arts. So he already has incredible genetics, super tall, yeah, big as fuck. And then he's got this incredible base of strength, not just from genetics, but from fucking hard labor, hard labor. Yeah. And then learns how to punch and realizes he can punch harder than anybody alive. It's so crazy. <laughs> So wrong. Dude, I want and him. And he's like really gentle. Like he's, a like, yeah. he's a great Did guy. He's a great guy. Did you see when uh when, when <laughs> he went in the ring after a Tyson Fury fight and they were yes. like trying to hype up a potential match? Yeah. And Tyson Fury's like, You got a big cock? And he's like, <laughs> he's he's like, like what? what is it? I yeah. got a big cock. Because no, he's like, You got a big yeah. Corey? You got a big Corey on you? <laughs> <laughs> and then was like, huh? And they're like, you know, like you got a big one. He's like, I don't no, don't do that. Dude, to Tyson me. Fury's hilarious. He's you see so his call funny. out video of Usyk. Have no, you seen that? Oh, no. go to Tyson Fury's Instagram page. He's like, you little bitch. <laughs> he, call me out middleweight. I do a terrible Tyson Fury impression. Which one? Oh, uh, is it the... It's the one with the glasses on. The sunglasses on right there. In the middle? Click on that one. You're going to love this. Okay. Middleweight. You say you want the WBC, and it's held by gypsies. It is held by gypsies. It's held by the Gypsy King, and it's held tightly. Grasp tight, and all road leads to a seven foot behemoth that will absolutely destroy you, middleweight. Middleweight, you will get smashed to bits. You say you wanted to fight me after you beat the bodybuilder, called me out on television, and now you're being a little bitch pussy boy, running, hiding, saying you've got injuries. You ain't got no injuries, you had a sparring contest. Get out and fight in December, you let your mouth go, now let's back it up. See if you can back it up, middleweight. Doesn't matter if it's December or April or August next year. The outcome will be the same. I will obliterate you. I'm a seven foot 20 stone behemoth and I will destroy you, middleweight. Find your balls. Come see me. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> Who's that? Middleweight. All right, we're good. That's great. That's He's great. a bear moth. Yeah. Imagine saying Bamoth. that. I'm a bear moth. I'm a behemoth. What is he saying? A behemoth. That's a behemoth? Yeah, he's trying to say behemoth. Oh. Well, he's not trying. He is saying it, but he's saying it with his I accent. I thought he was saying a bear moth. No, he's a behemoth. Like, that's what I thought he was saying. He's like, I'm a seven foot, 220 stone. Bear moth. Behemoth. Yeah. No, bear moth. Bear moth. Yeah. <laughs> behemoth. Is yeah. that what he's saying? I swear. He's definitely saying behemoth. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he okay. is. I'm the master of accents. Whatever the word was, it was even, maybe we should start calling people bear moths. I'm a bear moth. Bear moth's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. But, bitch, bitch, I'm a bear moth. By the way, he's a hilarious guy. Uh, Guga Foods. Right before oh. we watched somebody's head get eaten by yeah. a crocodile, um, this guy. You, but you said you're familiar with him. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I saw him. Uh, he baked a steak in mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. Yeah, I saw yeah. that too. Yeah. He, he does anything that anyone basically goes. What, what about if you if you made a steak this way? Right. And then he does it. Yeah. Uh, he'll like boil them in butter. That if you scroll up, some that one in the middle there. Yeah, that's the mayo one. I think. Yes, Where that is like, a mayo one. What would happen if you cooked? Yeah. Yeah, so he put the steak in mayonnaise, completely covered it in mayonnaise, and then baked it in the oven. And then when he pulled it out of the oven, then he seared it. Yeah. I think, or he might have like flamed it. He I think, yeah, he put it torch. on a grill. Did you put it on a grill? I think so. I've yeah, watched so many of these channels now, I forget, forget yeah. who's who, but there's so many good like steak cooking channels. There are so many, but this dude, and I also love that he always has like a sample moment at the end, and he's like, Damn. <laughs> He's like, my yeah. shit is good. Oh, so <laughs> look at him. I can't believe I'm saying that. <laughs> that is fantastic right there. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it so satisfying? I don't know. I love his enthusiasm. And everything looks... Scroll down. Go to another one. Do you know Close about the uh, chef bros in Turkey? 
No. Do you know those guys? No. There's these there's these brothers in Turkey that are uh, chefs and they're on Instagram. They're really interesting. And Sam they Taylor all, next. All they're cooking is uh, seafood. These guys just all cook seafood. It's I like love watching. Constant, I love yeah. watching anybody. Cook. You've watched Men with Pot, right? Those guys out in the woods. Men with pot. Men. I think men with pot. No. Men with pot. I think it's called. Is that? Am I right? Men with pot. No, this is it. See, and every video is like this. It's like a. It's like a guy in the woods, and it. Like, check this out. Like, you'll start. Gets everything that's for the, oh. for the fire, but then, it's always cinematically like you know put together, like it's edited well, and it shows every stage of them prepping this food, and they always use like that big hatchet style knife like it looks i guess he's making salmon here but it always you know it's it's like romanticized right, right. out in in nature cooking um and it always look ends up looking amazing and you always go like i want to do this and then you're like there's no fucking chance i'm gonna do this like even the way it just like rolls that has the camera film yeah. the knife cutting interesting and you're in nature yeah. and it's like every two seconds you get a new thing to look at it's like an mtv music video look yeah. They're treating you like you're a dummy. Like, yeah, look, yeah. dummy. Look, but it's, dummy. it's for Instagram. I mean, yeah, it but works. It's, no, it works great. It's yeah. exciting. There's another guy I follow. Um, Come on, I want to eat that salmon. Uh, what is it? Cooking with fire? There's a, I think it's cooking with fire. Let me tell cooking you. with fire? Yeah, I think it's cooking with fire. Hold on. But uh, this dude, it's all uh, really good Mexican food and really can't why is my fucking instagram not finding anybody hmm you ever ha find, have a hard time like is this your guy searching for people yep that's him cooking under yes with i have had that before such a pain in the ass strange <clears throat> so this dude makes some amazing shit and it's it's done in that same way like very fast like you get to see exactly how it's done every two seconds you get a new thing to look at like that yeah. seems to be the formula for and these kinds of things. Whenever you see meat, by the way, that reaches this state, you always mm. go, I got to go eat steak right now. Yeah. Always. I know. Oh, or like these brisk. Oh, my. Look, look at this that shit falling yeah. apart. That's one of the things that's so big in this town is brisket. Oh, my God. Yeah. Barbecue in this town is no joke. It is no You know it came joke. from German people? No. Yeah. It's Did Germans. Germans that are moving through Texas. They uh they like German smoked sausages and stuff that they would oh, that make makes in Germany. Sense. Yeah. And then it would kind of And then they they added like this Texas flair to it and became the barbecue that you know and love. Um I love a uh bespoke suit. So there's a couple of tailors that I follow. I know that you've worked with David August. Yeah. And he makes great suits and I love that day that you went to you did a show. <laughs> You, you got suits for you and the boys? Yeah. So all you guys looked so clean. It, it was, was dope. A guy in a, in, a, in a suit, it's just always a bespoke, nice suit. Yeah. Always looks great. This guy, though, <laughs> this guy makes... There's, there's like a, a real tradition of tailors in Hong Kong. Mm. And a lot of them yeah, are... Yeah, Ari went to one of those guys. Yeah, I ended up going... They're like they're, A lot of them are second, third generation. And had in my experience, I've seen a lot of people from India bringing o bringing that over but bringing it over a couple of generations ago and then it being passed down so you see a lot of like indian born tailors in hong kong mm. you know there's also a big indian population in hong right. kong right um but this dude <laughs> he does shit <laughs> this is doc nick today we are here to talk about his Ass. But <laughs> That's hilarious. Again, we have to slowly address it. What a ridiculous approach him, to selling suits. I know. And then he all... Starting with the jacket. He'll... I made this jacket. It is the most sensational fabric you have ever laid your eyes on. Can we zoom in and see this incredible two tone? It's not He's enthusiastic. It's a two tone. Yeah, to watch. Yeah. My signature cut. I have him absolutely gift wrapped in. Here is his Donald Duck back. Look at that, Donald Duck, Bugs Bunny. What is this? A kick pleat. Can we zoom in? A kick pleat, roping on the shoulders, but nothing. But it's also like this a guy's full incredible. Else yeah, inside. And he, Gosh, he's so, this man is what, what is it about like people that are like super thing. enthusiastic I've, about shit that make you like excited? Enthusiasm is contagious. I don't get enthusiastic about suits, but, but now then, I am. But now you are. Now he got me. Now you, you go like that guy's legit. He's super legit. That's it, but it's also inappropriate. <laughs> That's the best part. That's the best part. <laughs> if funny. you can be inappropriate and good at yeah. what you do, it's like yeah. bring Kevin Spacey back. Ah! 
The guy is fucking amazing. That's the best actor of a generation. Pretty fucking good actor. All he did was harass some people on set. Why the fuck are you an actor if you're not going to be able to harass people on set? That's the reason you become a star. In his day, that probably was. Yeah, for that sure. That's probably was. really. That's probably really it. Yes. Like they all did it. All of them. Can you imagine what the Dean Martins and Sinatra's oh. were like? Well, you've heard about like Fatty Arbuckle, right? You heard about the, the the Fatty Arbuckle was like a gigantic movie star at one point in time, but apparently stuck like a bottle up some girl's vagina. Oh my god! And, and it broke in there, and she she wound up dying. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. Find the find the story. There's something really wild like that. But wow. he was like a super famous movie star, and then it was over. Oof. Okay. Does this say a Coke bottle? With a Coke bottle. Virginia wrap. So it's like a, it seems like it's a known person. Can you make that text bigger? Was the biggest thing in Hollywood, he was accused of a heinous rape and murder of a notorious party girl. His adoring public wanted him strung up. Make it even bigger. He was one of Hollywood's biggest stars, adored by millions. Uh, but he's charged with murdering an aspiring actress after a shocking orgy. Jesus. Jeez. One minute, I'm the guy everybody loves. The next, I'm the guy everybody loves to hate. That's what he said after he got pinched on murder charges. <laughs> What's the deal? I don't know. Uh, she died. Okay, so she was examined by a doctor who concluded she was suffering from alcohol poisoning after drinking uh, too much bootleg liquor. When she died four days later, a, uh, a woman accused Arbuckle of raping the brunette beauty and accidentally crushing her bladder during a drunken sex session. Jesus. Uh, well, it looks like betrayed him. Da, 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 da. The prosecutor, an intensely ambitious man, made public pronouncements of Arbuckle's guilt before the trial and pressured witnesses to make false statements. Oh. All right. Well, ultimately, the judge found no violent, no, excuse me, no evidence of rape. Well, what about the glass? I don't know. Um, maybe there's, if you keep going, the maybe glass there's story? detail. Because that is, so it, that's it was, the bottle. So is the bottle story like a, a fake story? I don't know. Because the rest of this article doesn't really mention it. Why doesn't it? I don't know. Go back. That's also the is National Is that like Enquirer. one of those bullshit rumors? It could be. Um, the F Fatty Arbuckle scandal. It's from Neo. But I don't know if we're finding any. So she died from him collapsing on her? Just his weight? I'm not sure. I don't think I got it. Is that really what happened? This is a better assault. source here. Okay. Arbuckle. Uh, used a it. piece of ice to rip her story that quickly transmorgified into the obscene use of a Coca-Cola or wine bottle. He used a piece of ice? Yeah. Other witnesses testify that Arbuckle had actually used the ice to rub on her stomach as a means of relieving her belly pain. Scroll back up, though. So he uh, didn't do that. Let's see. Mo a little more. Um, all right. Plan to throw a party. He uh, brought the hefty supply of bootleg booze. According to a witness, uh, Arbuckle and Rep down three or more gin and orange wine drinks together. When he pulled into one of the ad uh, adjoining rooms, I've waited for you five years. I've got you now. Sc scroll down. Within an hour, she claimed to hear screaming, enter the room. He opened the door clad in pajamas, wearing Virginia's hat. Um, I am dying. Oh, Rap was on the bed. And I'm dying. I'm dying. He did it. The hotel doctor and nurse were called. They moved Rap to another room to rest for a few days. She had a ruptured urinary bladder. Um, so I guess we're trying to find out how that. So it sounds like her agent, the woman who died's agent, made the story worse by claiming Arbuckle used a pe uh, piece of ice to rest. So oh, don't know if it was just an attorney make it, saying this or whether that's actually what happened. So a piece of ice, yeah, and like jammed it up there. Ugh. Oh, like an ice sculpture or something? Or, yeah, like you know, yeah, a pointed piece, maybe. Oh. Jesus. Oh, maybe he ruptured her bladder with that, and then it got the story got fucked over and spun around. And, yeah, you know, one person tells it to another, and then it became a glass. It's crazy. Um. He was only 266 pounds. That's, That's it? That's what's crazy. Yeah, yeah. They're talking about his considerable size. People were so small back then Yeah, that a, a guy that big was a fatso. 260. 266, I think it said. Scroll scroll back up to where it said, because it, it mentioned the weight of his body. Yeah, he was more than two, 266 pounds. 
ruptured her bladder. That's not even that big. That's not that big. No, no. not t- not today. today. That's what's crazy. Like back then, it's like holy shit. Like you ever see those uh, old timey carnival places where they have like the fat man? Yeah, you can see the bearded lady and the fat. Yeah. Man. The fat man's like a regular guy. <laughs> yeah, in this world, <laughs> in today's world, for He's sure. He's not fat at all. Um, It'll get. That's Fatty Arbuckle. Yeah. I mean, they're like, he's kind of chubby. Yeah, he's chubby. I mean, he's a fat guy, but I mean, like, not compared to today. That was, no oh boy. That's a regular guy at Disneyland. <laughs> that is, I know. You know? Yeah. There's nothing freaky about that. Who's like, what? I eat, right? Yeah. Yeah. I have my big gulp. You couldn't even call him Fatty Arbuckle today. No mm-hmm. way. No way. And also, if he did lose all the weight, everybody would be like, you know what? You were beautiful when you were big, too. You didn't need to lose any of that. What if you were a fat guy like him? You called yourself fatty. Would anybody be allowed to say it? That's the only time that people are allowed to say it, like Fat Joe, who who lost (laughs) a bunch of weight. (laughs) Right. But uh, yeah, Yeah, I think you have to have the name. Because he said it. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of, there's that- But if you um, just said Fat Burt, that's rude. He, He actually said that he came out as fat. Really? Yeah, like there's people who can't come out of the closet. He goes, I came out as fat, so I own it. I'm, yeah. Well, I think what Bert loves more than anything is partying. And yeah. if, if he can party and maintain a usable form, like a functional form that can get him to where he needs to go and get him on stage, he's good to go. That's what I think. Bert wants the good, uh, the good times to continue. The good always. times will roll with Bert. Yeah. And so he uh, sacrifices. But guess what? What? They're not fucking rolling in October, buddy. October, bro. We're, we're going hard. It's called the no fun month. All right? <clears throat> Every single day, we've decided you have to burn 500 calories in an exercise. Not just like calories during the day. That's easy. That's easy. But 500 calories in one or two workouts. Okay. Yeah. We're in. I think that's fair. I think like, especially for guys that uh, are real busy like you, you know, get a workout in. Maybe you don't have time for like an hour and a half workout. Maybe yeah. you have time for 20 minutes, but you can do 30 minutes before you go to bed. Yeah. You and know? you split it up yeah, and you still you get the work in. And we wear straps again. Yeah, we'll wear straps. Uh, what's the best strap for measuring the amount of calories you burn? Because it's not that important for most people when they're working out, they're looking at like their maximum heart rate and like like that my zone thing that we use on the first over October. That thing was great. But does that measure how many calories you burned? Good question. I'm sure. I'm pretty the, sure it did. Do that. I'm pretty the, sure. I mean, it has does to. My it, it zone everything does. Measure calorie burning. Because with those things, you put Strap. in you put in your weight, you put in all these factors, right? Didn't yeah. we have to add answer a bunch of questions? Or was that the whoop? I think they probably The Whoop does that well too. Uh, my zone accurately calculates calories burned. Okay. There you go. Perfectly. Um, does the whoop accurately uh, calculate cal- calories burned as well? I don't remember that. That's easier. I think it does. Can you just keep that thing on your wrist? That's true. As you it, see the yeah. workout portion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, and we probably still have that sober October group. It also gives you an estimate of how many calories you burn throughout the day based on, I don't know based on that. height, weight, and heart rate. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. The problem with sober October is generally I have a, a hunt month or yeah. a hunt week. And so but I, 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 can be, rack right? up, I can rack up big Crazy. numbers. Ari got really mad last year. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is he fucking 600? How He's do got you, 600. It's only 11 in the morning. How do you think a uh, uh, penny pincher will do? You think he'll participate too and, and get those in? Uh, you mean, are you saying Ari? Yes. Oh. <laughs> um, I think he'll participate. I think he'll probably come in, you know, like hot. He'll be very excited about doing this. He'll yeah. talk a lot of shit. Talk a lot of shit. Yeah, yeah. it'll be fun. Bert will come. Bert, that's why we can't have a competition. It's Bert. If I was just competing with you and Ari, yeah. I'd be like, you know, we'll just have some fun. Yeah. But with Bert, I'm like, I want you to die. <laughs> you talk so much shit. I'm like, I'm going to take you to the depths of hell. I'm like, you have no idea. <laughs> when I set off my alarm in my gym, because I sweat so much, it set off the fire alarm. I was doing seven hours of cardio, and I, was, I watched John Wick 50 times. I just kept watching John Wick. Just getting through that thing? Yeah. Kept watching John Wick. Yeah. It's fucking right. Just fucking. Yeah. And thinking of Bert. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. There's so many great clips that are going to come out of this online. <laughs> well, it's like, I'm, I'm like, Bert, uh, you're making there is a no loser. mistake. There's no loser. That's the thing. Yeah, it's that's not the a thing. We can't have a competition. Those were the most fun ones. Like, the, that one was just too crazy. My wife didn't like it either. 
Yeah. It's like it's like I became obsessive. You know, I think we all did. We were working out hours and hours and every day. I got real sick during that month. Mm-hmm. But you I, still came back and ran fucking thirteen miles right day. after being that sick. Yeah, that was and that was also thirteen miles. The only reason, of course, I would have done that. I did that is that this we were all competing and you were like catching up. Yeah. You, were, you were passing people. Bert came in last. Ari was fucking coming at it hard. He liked it too. I also saw a side. That's the thing about competition is it like brings out yeah. things in people. It showed me a side of Ari because he, he really got into competing. Yeah. He, he enjoyed it. I think he really enjoyed it. Um, all right. I know you got to get going. So um, uh, I'm excited about this sober October. It'll be fun. It'll be yeah, fun, man. I'm excited. Hey, does vape pens count? Because I think this thing gets me high. To be discussed. <laughs> Because we had a conversation last year about cigars. Oh, that's right. Cigars kind of give me a buzz. I think you got. I think you have to allow cigars. Okay, then you get a buzz. Cigars, coffee, and a cigar. I'm feeling pretty good. Cigars, butt plugs, and coffee are allowed <laughs> for October. Uh, uh, thanks for coming, dude. My brother, love you. I love you to death. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank Always you guys for watching. I love what you've done here, man. It's incredible. I love what you're doing with everything, with the, all of your podcasts. Danny Brown's podcast is fucking hilarious. He's so fucking he's funny. He's so funny, man. He's like a comic. Do you know, he stood out front after our last live show and did a rant. Like, like <laughs> do you know how Joey does? Just did a rant that had everybody in tears. And I go, you just, I go, listen, man, I, I know how this works. You could go on stage and and you could just say your that could be that's a bit. And he goes, I don't even know what the fuck I just said. <laughs> <laughs> just record it and play it I back know. to him. It was so good. He could one he's like a Joey Diaz. Yes. Like he you know, Joey was always the funniest guy in the parking lot. Yeah. You know, that was the thing. And Joey figured out how to be the guy in the parking lot on stage. And it was like an exactly. instantaneous switch. That's all I told him. Were I told you there Danny. during that time? D- during the time where he no. really got good? Um, you, no, you came around 2007. He was already yeah. a murderer by then. Yeah, so that was after that. I, this is in the 90s, man. In the like the late 90s. like ninety. I met him in 96, I believe. And I think right around like 99, he figured it out. Really? Man, it was like uh, he hit a switch. And he had just decided that all oh, the fuck these agents, these cocksuckers, they're not giving me shit. And yeah. he, he was like, he was always trying to audition for a television show. He won't, always wanted to like not be too offensive when he was on stage because he thought maybe he'd get cast in something. And then he just fucked these people. And he, and he went on stage. I mean, it was almost like it was like one night. Yeah. He went on stage one night and talked to us, talked to the people in the audience the way he talks to us in the back parking lot. And then it just. And that was it. That was it. And I'm telling you, man, it was like he hit a switch. Yeah, there's people you see. I mean, I'm so glad that he figured that out because he, uh, yeah, I mean, I've told the story before, but when one of the first times I toured with you, he, we were backstage and like you, you would bring like three of us to open for you. And we open and we're just sitting around and he was like, so where's Christine this weekend? I go, oh, Christina, uh, she's in uh, Nashville. And he was like, Nashville. 1987 and he just starts telling this story <laughs> <laughs> all he had to hear was the city or it was knoxville it's i like got knoxville. this guy tied up in my trunk dude and i i i had never hung out with him i had no idea what was happening to me i was laughing so fucking hard oh man and then i made him read hell we all got into a van after and i go tell them he's like tell what i go the fucking craziest story i've ever heard in my life retell that again <laughs> About Knoxville, he's like, oh, oh yeah, and it was like <laughs> he's got so many stories. He's got so many. He stories. never runs out of them. He does the honeydew with uh, Stickler, and they do, and so, like most people go on that show and they go like, here's my story. Joey has so many stories that they have a like it's a series and it's year it's by year. She's so like they've done like eight episodes. He's like, all right, we're 1992, and he'll do like 1992 for two hours with Ryan. <laughs> And then he was like, when we come back, 93, it's a good, it was a good year. <laughs> That's how they do it. It's so good. And it's Joey being Joey telling all these wild stories. Yeah, you can't make a guy like that. Like, they, no. they, they exist so rarely. He was, and people, some people know the story, but some people don't. This is a, he was the reason why I took two people on the road with me. Because I would take Joey on the road, but Joey would go off on benders, and you would, he would not show up. Yeah. And it would happen, you know, not always, but it would happen enough that you had a plan for it right and so a couple times i had to use local openers and then eventually i go i'm just gonna bring three people just three of us this way yeah. if 
Joey doesn't show up, it's two man show. Joey shows up, it's a three man show. Yeah, no big deal because I just didn't want to. F- I just didn't want to fuck it up. I could not believe you told me that because when you're opening and somebody big um, says like you can open for me, it's so it's so exciting, but it's also like you're so thrilled to have a job, you know, because you're trying to find you're always trying to find good show. You're going from maybe you have one good sh- you're getting one good show every few months, so like you're doing good you're on good shows all the time. Yeah, That's the packed thrill. crowds, and so you just are so thrilled. Yeah, that someone's taking you and that you're getting to see like you're getting to perform in front of real crowds. And that you told me, you go, one time, Joey just called, like, I was like, where are you? And he's like, it's Sunday. I went home. And you're like, dude, we have a show tonight. He goes, I don't do Sunday shows. <laughs> yes. And I'm like, to be an opener and be like, tell somebody like, yeah, I don't do that. Joey knew I loved him unconditionally. Yeah. And he, he knew he was troubled, you know? Yeah. Uh, and he knew I loved him no matter what. That was So funny. That was, I just told him, just you show up. You, you, you're always going to go up. That, but you that know, is we one can of always his, work together. Just tell yeah, me you when. gave him that. You yeah. also said that I would be like, I'm nervous about this new thing. You go, you can't get fired. Yeah. And I say that to people now. I go, you can't get fired. Don't you can't worry. get fired. Yeah. This one I got Ari super duper high once in Boston. He's like, oh, I'm too high to go on stage. I go, dude, you can't get fired. You can't get fired. Yeah, I go, go have show. fun. Yeah. Go have fun. I go, you're a hundred percent. Like I'll always use you. Yeah. We'll always work together. Go yeah. have fun. The, um, wh- I remember one time I was working clubs in like 20, 20- 12 i'd known joey a few years and he just called me one night and he goes what are you doing i'm like uh i'm in kansas city and uh you know he's like what are you doing in kansas city i go i have a show tonight he goes you know what kind of fucking momo goes out on a sunday <laughs> and i was like what <laughs> he's like you can't do t- you can't do sunday shows Tom. and i go but i'm i have it's part of my contract You're he goes fucking- you tell them you tell them i don't do sunday shows i'm not a fucking loser piece of shit and i was like okay I'll tell them. I love Sunday shows. Yeah, like, all right, Sunday man. shows are casual. I know. People are relaxed. You can have a more relaxed kind of like Thursdays tone. and Sundays. Are like I love them. So fun. I love I love Mondays and Tuesdays too. I love all the days of the it's week. Fucking, it's a great job, Tommy Bunn. It's a great job. I was I was telling the guys I got a couple more minutes. I was telling the guys in uh, the green room last night how we met. And we met on the Real Man of Comedy Tour. The Real Man of with Comedy. With Charlie Murphy and John Heffron. Excuse me. Bud Light presents Maxim's yeah. The Real Man of Comedy. Yeah, there's a lot of words in there. <laughs> and the, the real man of genius. Yeah. If you don't remember those old commercials, the guy who was the lead singer of that was the singer from The Eye of the Tiger, the fucking Survivor song. He was the lead oh, singer of Survivor. Really? So we were touring with the lead singer of Survivor and this other dude. And they would do the real men of genius. They would do those, oh, like, right. those yes. commercials. Yes, they were yes, like, yes. It was like... They were funny lines. They had some funny shit. They got yeah. laughs. Yeah. And the guy would sing, you know, and he had a fucking killer voice. It's the eye of the tiger. Yeah. That guy, his yeah. fucking voice is incredible. Yeah. So we toured with that guy wow. and we met you. So I was talking about how we met like in every town, there was like an opening act yeah. and generally, you know, nice guys, almost all of them were funny, but a couple of them really sucked. And uh, in one of the towns, there was this one dude and he was like really drunk after the show, like angry. He kind of bombed. Yeah. And uh, the other guy's killed. Mm-hmm. And I was saying, and, and he was hanging out with us in the green room. It was like, we're like, let's get out of here. I'm like, this is the reason why I bring people on the road with me. Yeah. Because you never know. Like 99 times out of 100, they're going to be great. Yeah. But it's that one time. And I said, and then um, I did the Phoenix Theater, the uh, Hollywood Celebrity the Theater. Celebrity that theater. was called? Yeah. Celebrity Theater. Uh, and I met you. And I remember watching you, and you only did like seven minutes or no, something. No, three. Three. Three minutes. Three minutes. Yeah. That's hilarious. That's why it was 2007. Yeah. Three minutes. And in those three minutes, I'm like, this fucking dude is talented. I'm like, you're really funny. And uh, we became friends like immediately. Yeah. It was, it was, I, I couldn't believe it. Because you were actually, there's, there was a few other acts who, who would be like, give me your number that I had done stand up in front of, and none of them called. But you called. You called and you go, do you want to, do you like the UFC? And I was like, uh, I don't know. I, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> you go, no, you said, do you want to go see the UFC in Tampa? And I was like, I mean, I guess so. <laughs> and you're like, well, I got a show the night before. We can do shows the night before and then go to the UFC. I was like, oh, that sounds fucking cool. All right. <laughs> I go, I've never seen that. And then we, yeah, we <clears throat> flew there and um, it was great. We did, we, we did the, dude, that was, you were doing the improv. Yeah. You did the Tampa yeah. improv. Yeah. And then we do the UFC and I couldn't, I had seen obviously UFC stuff on TV, but I was, that was the first time I went to a live event and I was like, oh my God. Cause the, 
you can't describe what it feels like to be in an arena. The energy, the energy is just is insane. It's for a fight too. Yeah, Ener- like arena energy. I did an arena this past weekend for stand up, and that's incredible. But the energy to see two people put like their their lives on the line yeah. to fight is indescribable. Well, not just two people, like two of Warriors. the best combat yeah. sports athletes yeah. on earth. It's duking insane. it out. It's crazy. It's a, it's it's the wildest I had sport goosebumps ever. Goosebumps like all like repeatedly throughout mm-hmm. the night. Like, these cheers and then I wouldn't even know who was fighting, but I was so close and I'm watching, you know, the like the striking and then when they start grappling and and seeing how people when win and all the drama of the emotions of the fighters, their camps and the crowd. I mean, it was just a whole other level of excitement. It's a wild wild sport, man. And whenever I think like, oh, I can't keep doing these yeah, things for I don't I do know how so you keep different. doing this. I don't yeah. know how you do it. I just I love it so much. You must. Yeah, you every, really every, must. That's the thing. It's like I don't I don't want to quit any of the things I do cuz I love them all. Yeah. I really really do. Like when I'm at the UFC and I have the headphones on, the microphone, I don't want to be anywhere else. Oh, yeah, right there. That's cool. It, it's, it is cool that you still do that and you definitely don't have to do that and you still love it that much. I really do. But yeah. I also love podcasting. I also love stand up. I love all those things. Well, like if I had to not do one of those things, I would, I wouldn't know which one to not do. Yeah. I would definitely never quit stand up. That seems most like fun. the most fun. Yeah. It's the most free too and it's like it's the most creative out of all of them because like the the process of coming up with an idea and turning it into a bit that actually gets a laugh it's like it's weird fucking convoluted twisted mind puzzle that you have to solve and when you can get it all together and put together an act that you think i could film this like this is good we're we're ready to rock yeah like that's a wild feeling there's nothing like that but the ufc is a like i I will never stop watching and i did go to see one in austin where i I was in the audience i almost went to that with you that was great it was great. I was like, ooh, I kind of like this. That's really fun. You definitely, I know you genuinely love it because you always know, you you like all combat sports because you're always like, I, I watched this kickboxing thing this weekend. Yeah. I watched a boxing match. I watch, You watch fights. Yeah, I'm not like a, a real big expert in boxing. I watch a lot of boxing, but there's a lot of people like my friend uh, Radio, Radio Rahim. Yeah. He knows everybody. He knows like what I know about the UFC. He knows, he knows, about, knows boxing. about boxing. Yeah, yeah. So he's like my go-to guy if I have any boxing questions. I, yeah. I defer to him. Yeah. But he's, uh, you know, he's doing like a lot of boxing commentary now and he does like uh, post-fight interviews and shit like that. But there's so many boxers. It's too hard to follow all the sports. And I follow a lot of kickboxing too, but even my my limited knowledge of kickboxing is very limited compared to my MMA. Yeah, I, lo- I love, I don't know shit about kickboxing, but I do love watching a good kickbox- big kickboxing match. You should watch like, Glory. There's that, a, a company called Glory. They put on these wild fights. And I think they're doing a Badr Hari, uh, Alistair Overeem rematch. Ooh. They fought twice before. One time- um, How old is Overeem now? He's got to be 40. Wow. But still he's like free that. from USADA. Yeah. So he gets to get juicy. Arr. He's going to get juicy. So they're giving him many. I think that fight's taking place in, I think it might be in October. But yeah. that's, uh, Glory is a great organization to watch like real high level kickboxing. They have some elite fighters over there. Really fucking good fighters. Yeah. That's where Israel Adesanya came from. He fought in a bunch of kickboxing organizations, but he fought Jason Wilness in uh, 42, Glory. Right 42 jacked fuck uh yeah. for uh, it, when uh jason wilness and israel adesanya fought that was for the middleweight title and i thought that adesanya won it was a very close fight but i thought uh, yeah. adesanya should have got the nut so he would have been the world champion in glory before he came over to the, the UFC. ufc that's how good adesanya is it's he's a fun one to watch man he's a he's a craftsman yeah you know he's a skilled like technician in there i'll never forget when i was in new zealand he came to my show and we hung out a little afterwards and I was just like, Hey, you know, just curious. Like, when did you like think you could be, it's it's such a a wild thing to become. Right. And he goes, I remember I was uh, at home. I was watching these guys fight and I thought I could be the best in the world at that. And I was like, that was your thought. I could be the best in the world at that. And he was, and he was so serious. He was like, yeah. I was like, yeah, I guess that's where your mind is different when you yeah. end up doing that. If you get to that level, you have to have a bulletproof mind. 
Like yeah. that's uh, there's no if ands or buts about it. To be a guy, especially playing his game, which is the striking game. Yes, the striking game the striking is, is incredible. It's a wild game, man. If you're playing the wrestling game, I mean, you, you need strength and endurance and technique and years and years of wrestling. But those wrestler guys can control people. Like uh, a guy like uh, Khabib, who's a, the best example because yeah. he's the greatest, the greatest lightweight of all time. I mean, just a fucking monster, and he would control people and smash them. I mean, that was his thing. Just control you, get you to the ground, and just fucking smash you. That is a much more controlled game. Khabib only got hit a couple times hard in his whole career. So how, because everybody talks about, and I don't know well enough, but everybody talks about, obviously, his his jujitsu, his grappling, yeah. his ground game. His grappling. Uh, yeah. His grappling, um, and just like how unbelievably elite yeah. he is. But how was he as a striker? He was good. I mean, he knocked Connor down. He, he got much better later in his career. He got very dangerous on the feet to the point where you were worried about his hands equally. Like you, like when he knocked Connor down, that was like a big deal because Connor didn't knock him down. He cracked Connor and dropped him and was taking Connor down at, towards the end of the fight, like and just smashing him, beating the fuck out of him and talking to him while he's beating him up. Let's talk now because Connor was saying a bunch of crazy, crazy shit, shit yeah. leading up to the fight. So he's on top of him, smashing him, and Connor can't get up. And yeah. Khabib's on top of him going, let's talk now. Bam. Let's talk now. Bang. And at the end, Connor was like, it's all business. And he's like, fuck, it's not business. No, not with him. It's, it's not, not business. No. This is real. Yeah. But it's like, my point is like that game is a different game because that's, that's a, I mean, an amazing martial arts execution. What he can do, what he, what, what he, Khabib did during his career is like, unlike anything anybody's else anybody else has ever done he went 29 and 0 and destroyed everybody didn't even have close fights i mean he had like one or two like kind of close fights early in his career but once he got on a roll in the ufc was, like the michael johnson fight edson yeah. barboza fight smash everybody was getting smashed ally quinta made a, a good account of himself and he handled himself very well in that i don't fight, know if this is an overdone thing in ufc or in, in mma stuff but is there uh, like, do people believe that he'll ever return or is it like, pretty? I don't think so. I no. think in his mind, it's not worth it. He doesn't want to, his mother doesn't want him to fight. His father died. Right. He was his coach. And he said, he told his mother he'd fight one more time. And then that was it. And that was it. And I think he's also, he likes coaching now. Yeah. And why not go out as like the greatest of all time in, in the lightweight division, unquestionably, hands down, one of the greatest of all time in any division, yeah. if not the best and 29 and oh, undefeated, dominated defended your title multiple times and kicked everybody's kicked ass ev kicked everybody's ass the the final ten thousand dollar question do you think khabib could beat any in arm wrestling do you think that could be arranged not if he challenged him not if he challenged because this guy him. cannot lose i love you tommy love you thank too. you bye bert and tom tom and bert one goes topless while the other wears a shirt. Tom tells stories and Bert's the machine. There's not a chance in hell that they'll keep it clean. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave. No scripts, a bit of booze, amateur partology. Dirty jokes, raunchy humor, no apologies. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave.